To view Stellar Blade in action is one thing, but to play it in the hands is another entirely. This is mostly because, on the surface, its ghoulish enemy designs and purposely melodramatic sci-fi story could fool you into thinking that Shift Up's debut PS5 exclusive is your typical character action game, very much styled in the vein of greats like Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, and not so subtly Near Automata. In reality, however, its combat and narrative are far more nuanced, utilising a traditionally Souls-like foundation, but gradually building upon it with new mechanics to slowly and meticulously make you feel like an alien-slaying badass. Yes, in many ways Stellar Blade is a homogenization of familiar action game staples seen before, but it blends them together effortlessly alongside a few original neat ideas to create one incredibly slick whole, and my favourite game of the year so far. At the centre of this grand post-apocalyptic tale is Eve, one of the last remaining cybernetic soldiers tasked with reclaiming Earth back from the evil Natiba forces. How this alien race invaded serves as one of Stellar Blade's core mysteries. While the narrative can often sometimes go down some increasingly convoluted avenues in a bid to seem grander and more philosophical than it actually is, there were still plenty of twists and turns in the plot that I didn't see coming. Eve herself could have been played wooden by actress Rebecca Hansen, but there's always an underlying sense of humanity present seen in the way she reacts to any and all surrounding revelations. Her understated personality perfectly matches her cool and calm approach to dispatching enemies as it's constantly hit home that she's a cybernetically enhanced soldier bred for war. Of course, making her function as such on screen means getting to grips with Stellar Blade's aptly stellar gameplay. Consisting of light attacks, heavy attacks, parrying and dodges, all the usual Souls-like basics in terms of combat are here in perfect working order. Setting it apart though are the various cinematic rewards I was treated to whenever I managed to pull off a series of perfect parries or blocks flawlessly, engaged either by staggering a foe and then following it up with what's known as a retribution attack or simply deploying any one of the four typically devastating beta skills that work expertly to offer me space from enemies or deplete their shields, depending on what the encounter requires. It's these beta skills in particular that imbue each bite with an appropriate level of flourish, breaking up the usual onslaught of light and heavy sword swipes to constantly make various combat options available. This makes even the toughest tussle with a group of foes a puzzle of sorts that can be overcome using the ideal method. Method in most cases being to find the best way of sinking the tip of Eve's sword into an Atiba's gut or cranium the most efficient way possible. Simply put, anyone familiar with the Souls-like genre's typical fare will feel right at home in Stellar Blade, and once you pick up on certain works, such as how red enemy flashes mean an onslaught of hits are set to come, enemy windups can only be interrupted using a beta skill and so on, you'll be on the path to mastering the blade. Not once did I feel like I was being punished for failing within a particular tough area or against a boss in Stellar Blade either. The reason for this being all the subtle ways it deviates from the likes of Dark Souls, because yes, while camps serve as this game's equivalent of bonfires and provide a means to upgrade Eve's exospine, gear loadout and cosmetic options, they crop up very frequently to shave off much of the usual frustration that comes with backtracking through the same areas after being instant killed by the environment or an enemy. Then there's the fact that XP or skill points aren't lost upon death, which I can see annoying some genre diehards, but for me alleviates much of the usual annoyance that comes from repeatedly failing the same encounter. Stellar Blade doesn't care too much about punishment, though it will punish you, and instead wants to get you back into the action. Stellar Blade doesn't just see you do battle within locations comprised of linear pathways and the odd shortcut though, because while these sections do make up the bulk of this 15 to 20 hour slashathon, equally as impressive are the structural elements where developer Shift Up has sought to experiment a little. The crumbling city of Zion, for instance, serves as a base in which to aid fellow survivors and makes for a nice break from the usual intensity. You also then have two more open sections in both the Wasteland and Great Desert, which reminded me a lot of the hub-style sections seen in 2018's God of War and most recently Star Wars Jedi Survivor. These brief instances in which I could explore at my own pace really aided my sense that even an Earth as ravaged as this one is worth fighting for. Some of the most memorable moments in the story, at least design-wise, come from the couple of occasions where Eve's ability to wield her blade is removed entirely. Yes, you heard that correctly, in a game called Stellar Blade. It's here where Stellar Blade's third-person gunplay is firmly placed at the forefront to serve as a nice contrast to conventional swordplay. But while Stellar Blade's temporary switch to a shooter only offers limited depth by way of multiple ammunition types, Shift Up makes up for this with a surprisingly grisly and gory tone, which I, as a fan of survival horror, appreciated the overt nod to. This brings me 
only onto the places where Stellar Blade ever so slightly stumbles. They mostly rear their head in areas where it strays too far away from its core action RPG foundation, such as the shooter segments, yet more sinful are the handful of times it tries its hand at being a precision platformer. Eve's moveset and physics are simply too slippery to match the precision required for swinging from pole to pole, jump from drone to drone, and so on. One sequence relatively early on required me to hop across platforms while following a specific code order, a feat which routinely saw me fall to my death more than once. Luckily, these occurrences don't crop up too often, and it's never too long before you're back into the killer combat. Another drawback is the incredibly rote side missions, which largely boil down to simple fetch quests. This is especially disappointing since Stellar Blade demonstrates its willingness to experiment and push genre boundaries elsewhere, a fact that makes being asked to routinely go here and collect this, only to bring it back to the quest giver all the more tiresome. Sure, such side activities are entirely optional, offer a better excuse to explore Stellar Blade's two hub locations, and are often coated in good narrative texture that tells you more about how the state of the world came to be, but it's a shame that the act of completing them isn't as inventive as it could have been. Finally, I can't finish off this review without mentioning just how drop-dead gorgeous Stellar Blade looks, especially when it's in motion. Expectedly, it has a tendency to lean into the inherent sheen and shininess of its underground lab facilities, but equally aesthetically astounding are the more natural aspects of this earth. Traversing through the war-torn ruins of a city as the rain pours down does well to embed a melancholic atmosphere, while the sun beating down on the desert's dryness contrasts against a small oasis reservoir that hints at just how beautiful these lands used to be. A countless number of times during my playthrough did I have to stop and smell the roses, as it were, staggered at the level of visual fidelity Shift Up has achieved with a game still running on Unreal Engine 4. I played in performance mode too, and I still couldn't fault the presentation of this PS5 exclusive. Stellar Blade is a rare example of an action RPG that blatantly pulls from its inspirations, yet somehow still finds multiple avenues in which to form an identity of its own. It exudes just as much substance as it does style, building off of pre-existing Souls-like combat fundamentals by surrounding it in beta, burst and retribution manoeuvres that look just as good as they feel to pull off, all without giving up any mechanical depth. Though it's disappointing that Stellar Blade briefly stumbles with a few boring side missions and mandatory platforming sequences that suffer from slipperiness, none of these ruin the sheen that Shift Up has been able to produce in its debut effort by way of story, combat and exploration. Stellar Blade is as an exceptional action experience as they come, not to be missed by those who have access to a PS5. We at The Mirror Gaming give Stellar Blade a stellar score of 5 out of 5. So there you go guys, in terms of my full review thoughts of Stellar Blade, I really, really like this one, in case you can't already tell. But what do you think? Do you plan on picking it up? What are your thoughts? Do let me know in the comment section below. And then, when you've done that, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, be sure to leave it a like, and consider subscribing to the Mirror Gaming YouTube channel to stay up to date with even more videos like this. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.